Hello everyone, today with the help of Let's Build a Zoo, I'll be answering the age-old question, how much goose sex is too much? Whoever coined the term breeding like rabbits obviously never had to deal with these digital geese. These randy little bastards are insatiable. Let's Build a Zoo is the Ron Seal of video game sims, doing exactly what it says on the tin, letting you build a charming pixelated zoo simulation. Ever wanted to see a cow bounce up and down on a trampoline? This game has you covered. From here I'll be referring to it as LBZ as saying the whole title each time is a little bit of a mouthful. LBZ is the chilled out zoo sim I didn't know I needed. There is enough plate spinning going on to keep you constantly engaged without feeling too overwhelmed. There isn't a lengthy tutorial to get bogged down in either, which can put off some people before they even get started. The game starts off simple and builds from there. A lot of the buildings and features are locked behind the research screen, which is a bar that is gradually filling with each passing day. Don't mistake this for an idle clicker though. The game is surprisingly deep, allowing you to monitor and change many things ranging from staff, their pay, which area they work in, the animals all have a list of needs from space inside their enclosure to the level of entertainment and a handful more. With most good simulation park builder type games, there's a satisfying feedback loop as you spend more on the park, getting more animals and amenities, the more customers you attract to your zoo, meaning more money to expand further. It's all up to you where you place the many buildings and enclosures and thankfully, you can actively move them and resize them after you've placed them, if you feel the need to move. And thankfully it's all free too, which is a great addition since as the animals breed and multiply, they will require even more room. Thankfully this is one of those good simulation games. It really nails down the one more feeling go that 4Xs are known for. After each day the game autosaves shows you your daily report and refreshes it back to the opening hours bringing with it new opportunities to adopt new animals from the world map screen. The rescue shelter changes which animals let you adopt each day for a small fee per animal. Once you get a few hours in, the more zoos will become available, offering trades for some of their animals for some of yours. This segues nicely into talking about the game's many variants. To my knowledge that there are 10 visual variants to each and every animal, from which there is a good number already. That's not even mentioning the DNA splicer, letting you create your own custom animals out of the DNA of two already held animals. It's in your interest to discover all the variants, not only for the simple pleasure of seeing all the adorable sprite designs of the creatures, but you will also be able to trade certain variants with other zoos for their animals. There are also a list of people with tasks. Completing them rewards you with money and some unlockables, to give you a little bit of direction to the somewhat sandbox feeling game. The game also has a newspaper which features reporting on Yazoo's activities whenever you make strides in different areas. The writing is usually quite funny, but that is subjective to each and every person. Once in a little while you'll be offered moral choices, like deciding whether or not to deal with the black market trader, do business with people offering what the game calls scammer moles. Or you can get choices where you can help out people, usually charity focused activities like donating money or taking in certain animals after a natural catastrophe. There is also a good and bad meter, which appears on some facilities as a requirement, like 10 good to be able to build a farm and grow your own crops, becoming self sustainable, or 10 bad to build a slaughterhouse and sell the products. After being smeared in the newspaper by a secret reporter, reviewing the nutritional status of the food I was feeding the animals, I decided to swap to the more expensive, healthier, nutritious foods. But now I found myself being much more calculated and pragmatic with which animals I kept. There is a donate animal button which lets you, for a small fee, remove an animal from your zoo, allowing you to effectively control the population of your zoo. There is a lot of information on the animal screen when clicked on, from age, gender, diet and pregnancy status all of which are helpful in deciding who to donate. After I had all the immediate buildings down and settled into a nice rhythm, I found the population control taking up quite a bit of my time, considering those damn geese never leave each other alone, along with rabbits and chickens coming in a close second and third in the attack on the birth notifications bell. 
I haven't found myself this pulled in by an indie game since Game Dev Tycoon, which is also a solid recommendation for anyone interested. My first session with the game proper, I played the demo before it released. Before I realised the time, I'd been playing it for 5 hours. A game loop, endearing visuals, and a soundtrack of different songs I can't say enough good things about. It honestly never gets stale, even after multiple hours. The game isn't perfect. At time of writing, there are a few bugs. The lack of a few quality of life features does bring down the experience a tad. But other than those small grievances, this is a solid recommendation if you are in the market for a content-rich game for a cheap price. Thank you for sticking with me through all that and joining me in my little corner of the internet. I'm going back to my zoo. See you next time.